All right, I guess we can get started. Um, awesome. Yeah. So I hope I'm audible. Can you guys see my screen? Is it fine? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Good. So yeah, as a little about me, I am pursuing my EECS at NIT. Today we'll be looking at uh, basics of ML. So let's dive in. So this is a crisp agenda of today's content. We would be discussing about what machine learning is, why we use it, its various types, and the basic steps involved in a machine learning problem. And uh, we would also be looking at two very simple machine learning projects uh, for you to have a clear vision of our data. So yeah, this is a small anecdote about machine learning, which is really fun, which I found. And it kind of simplifies the whole concept of machine learning in a small word. So it's like, it goes like if a parent says, you know, if all your kids, uh, friends are gonna jump off a bridge, would you do the same? And according to a machine learning algorithm, actually yes. So what exactly is machine learning? So you're using past data to process and that is gonna influence the way you're taking your future decisions. So if according to your past data, all your friends have jumped off a bridge, you would technically do so. So let's go to the actual context, introduction to ML. So what is machine learning? It's basically a subset of artificial intelligence where the computer can actually generate algorithms and improve their own ability to solve problems by analyzing the data that's provided to them and performing tasks that do not need any human intervention. So it's kind of a complex data processing and making decisions based on that. Yeah. So don't tell computers how to do things. Tell them what to do and let them surprise you with the results. It's again, just a small anecdote on machine learning. It's pretty much what we're gonna do. We're gonna tell them the data and we're gonna tell them the end results. We're going to let the computers figure out how to get there. So that's pretty much how we're going to do this workshop. Okay, types of machine learning. So broadly, there are three types of machine learning, supervised, unsupervised, and reinforced. So before going deep into the types of machine learning, that's something that you guys need to know. So in machine learning, we have two things called features and labels. Features are basically the input data and label is our output. This actually applies to any kind of, you know, supervised, unsupervised, or reinforced, doesn't matter. Feature is to be precise, one column of your data in your input set. Let's say to understand this better, you could think of an example where uh, someone is trying to choose a pet. So you would take into consideration the family income, the age of the kid, you know, uh, where they live, etc. And the label would be the final choice of their pet, such as dog, cat, fish, etc. So now let's check what exactly supervised learning is. Supervised learning is a type of machine learning where the machines are trained using well-labeled training data. And on the basis of that data, they predict the output. So there's a defined set of features and labels, and it studies that to understand and proceed further with new data. Unsupervised learning actually is the use of AI to identify patterns in the data set. And this data is neither classified nor labeled. So it is just given a bunch of points and it's trying to figure out different type of pattern or if there's any similarity with which it can actually attain the uh, label for the new ones. Reinforcement learning is actually training the machine learning model to make a sequence of decisions. So this is kind of like a trial and error method or you could 
think of it learning in real time um a good analogy to this would be a character in a video game where he or she goes to one side checks out if there are no obstacles it would continue going there or if if it hits a wall they'd probably turn right and try to go in another direction so it's going to stay at that time and try to make new decisions so that's about reinforcement learning today we would be dealing primarily with supervised learning so that again is uh, classified into two so we have classification and regression classification is a type of machine learning problem where you would be uh, assigning one set of features to a particular label and you will have only a definite set of labels let's say uh, you have a, you might be considering different features to classify a dog from a cat so here dog and cat are your labels and uh, various features like whether it has whiskers whether it has long ears or what's the uh, face diameter and a lot of other things we could consider to be the features regression on the other hand is an example of an extrapolation where there are no definite set of labels but the output function uh, output is actually a function of all the features inside so let's say uh, to understand this better we could take in the various uh, parameters that we would keep in our mind while deciding the house rent of a person we would be considering where they are what's their age what's the uh, uh, basic salary of that person and then we would be determining the rent so that's actually you know rent is not going to be a set of classified values that's something about that so what are the basic steps of machine learning so firstly we need some data to do the machine learning so what do we do we either import the data or we create a new data set of our own by collecting data from everywhere we could have multiple surveys we could have a nice uh, excel sheet or the, a csv usually it's a csv a csv is basically comma separated values so um, these are the different data sets that we would be coming across and once we import this data set we need to clean the data set what do i mean by cleaning we need to remove all null values we need to remove all rns values the values that we know that it's going to disrupt the entire system so for example there might be some values where you know the house rent is in negative because you know some person messed up the calculations so we need to you know make sure that there are no obvious blaring errors in our data that that we could do with multiple functions in numpy and python so that's how you clean the data a uh, second step would be splitting the data so one might ask why do we need to split the data so if one is actually trying to do a program we usually try to run it with our sample test cases and yeah uh, one second i got a question yeah so do you remove all outliers or just error in this data yeah we remove all outliers any data that doesn't seem to make sense we try to remove it yeah yeah so what do we do so why do we need to split the data so we try to try our own you know in a regular function or a regular program we try to put our test cases yeah to test if the function is working fine so here we kind of do the same thing we need one set of data on which the machine learning model is training on and one set of data to validate how good the machine learning algorithm is so we need to split our current data set into two parts one would be the training data set and the other would be the test data set okay fine now we have split the data we have Uh, one set for training, one set for test. So what do we do next? Next is the kind of the most crucial part where we decide or create an algorithm or a model for our purpose. This is actually according to use case. 
So, you know, if you need to separate cats from dogs, you pick any classification algorithm. Or if you want to predict uh, breast cancer or anything, you, you want to predict the chances, you could have a, a regression algorithm. Next is, again, we're going to train this model on our training data set. And we're going to test it with our test data set. Then we check the output between, and we check any uh, accuracy issues between the predicted output and the actual output that's present in our test data set. So if we're not happy with the results, we go back, we try to see if there's anything that needs cleaning or if we need to split the data more, if we have too much in training or too much in set. We try to adjust that a little bit. And worst case, we might have to, you know, make modifications in our model as well. So that's something about it. So I have one question for all those who are attending today. Uh, those who have tried machine learning already, what language do you guys use? Guys, am I audible? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you like repeat the question? Yeah, so those who have already tried machine learning. So what kind of, what language do you guys use for your processing? Oh, awesome. Okay, there we have one Python here. Any other Python stands? Yeah, Jupyter Notebook, cool, cool, cool. Oh, is that so nice, it's nice, yeah. I've never tried Swift actually. Yeah. Awesome. There are a bunch of people who are new to machine learning. No issues. That's what this thing is here for. Yeah. Nice. So we usually use Python in R, but here we're going to use Python. So let's see why. Okay. Why do we need to use Python? So primarily because it has a very large uh, library ecosystem. You have so many inbuilt functions that we can help. And it, it is a very easy language to learn. Yeah. So there is a very low entry barrier, very flexible. We could do multiple things to this and it's easy to read. It has a huge community following and we have, we can always ask for help online and there'll be a lot of people who would help us out with it. And it is platform agnostic, like usual, you know, all the other languages are there. So these are some of my favorite libraries. We have NumPy, we have Pandas, and Scikit-learn. And my personal favorite, TensorFlow. Okay. Uh, we use NumPy for uh, scientific computing, you know, uh, cleaning the data set and making statistical approaches to the data. That's something we use NumPy for. Pandas we use for data analysis. Uh, and uh, scikit-learn we use for the actual algorithms that we would be you know, picking out for our models. And TensorFlow is something that we would be using for deep learning. So I'm not gonna go into that today. We would be mainly using NumPy and scikit-learn for our projects. Okay, here's the fun part, guys. So we're gonna do a couple of exercises, one with classification and one with regression. So I'm gonna post the notebook link over here and uh, you guys can fork it and work on it. Just a second. See if you guys are able to open this link.
Awesome. Okay. So this is the fun part, guys. So we're going to do an iris classification problem first. So what is this iris classification problem? Anyone who's done machine learning so far would know that this is by far the most common beginner project that people have done. So this is actually, iris is actually a family of flowers and it has uh, several species inside the family. And uh, those are actually Cetosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. So we're gonna use multiple features as we learn to label the data into these three labels. So we're gonna use the uh, iris data set that's already present in Cyclone, so that's awesome. As I told you earlier, Python has a lot of inbuilt data sets, a lot of inbuilt libraries. Those are really helpful for us when it comes to machine learning. So over here, we're gonna have 150 samples of uh, data and it's uh, divided into three broad labels, Setosa, Virginica, and Versicolor. And we have four features that we would be taking into consideration to label it into these three labels. Those are sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. So what are we gonna do? Let's first load the data set. As we learned in step one, we're gonna load the data set. So since this is actually an inbuilt data set, it's gonna be clean. So we don't have to bother about cleaning the data right now. So we're gonna load this. So for those who are not familiar with Jupyter Notebook, uh, this is actually a cute little way of collaborating text as well as code. And you have these small code blocks wherein you can execute only that part of the code. So it's, it's pretty cool, guys. You can try it out. So what I would suggest is you would have an option here called copy to drive. It's not there in mind because I'm the owner. So you guys can copy this a uh, notebook into your drive and you can work on it simultaneously as I, come, I uh, do over here. If you guys are able to copy, just uh, mention it in the chat. Okay. Uh, you need to copy the entire notebook. It's uh, There will be a small button over there that says copy to drive. Uh, you could just click it and it will clone the whole notebook into your system. Oh, okay, cool. So I hope everyone's able to do that. So you can just try out this a uh, first piece of code right now, where we import the data set from scikit-learn. Okay, awesome. So now what we're gonna do is, we need a set of features and we need a target or, or labels. So this is awesome feature in this data set, which is target and label. So the target basically contains the features, uh, sorry, uh, the data basically contains the features and the target contains the labels. So we're gonna have two variables assign data to one and target to another. So let's try that out right now. So we're gonna put iris the data to X and iris dot target to Y. So it's basically separating the data set into uh, the features and the labels clear. So what's the next process? Just recall guys, what is the next process? We need to split the data set into test and train it. So lucky for us, we have an awesome function that already does the same. We have a train test split function that's present in scikit-learn. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that function, import it from scikit-learn, 
from sklearn.model selection. We're going to import test train split. And what we're going to do is we're going to have four variables x train, x test, y train, and y test. And uh, there is this test size that is given over here. So what, one might wonder what that is. So I told you earlier that we would be dividing the data set into you know, a fraction of it. Yeah, keeping a fraction to test and a fraction to uh, train. So here, the point five essentially implies that half of our data set, we would be uh, keeping it in train and half of our data set, we would be using it for test. And uh, X train basically has the training features and Y train has the training label. Whereas X test has the testing features and Y test are the testing labels. So what essentially we're gonna do here is that we are gonna build a model. We're gonna fit it with our training data. After we fit it with our training data, we're gonna use X test on that model to predict what the Y test would be. And we're gonna compare our Y test that's uh, present currently from the data set and the one that we got from the predictions. And with that, we'll be determining how accurate our machine learning model is. Now we're gonna just uh, code the algorithm. So we're gonna be using a very simple decision tree algorithm. Uh, you can actually learn more about it from the internet. It's a pretty cool algorithm where, you know, you check for uh, nice classification methods. So we're gonna use, uh, call this model here. This is already present in scikit-learn, so that's cool. So we're gonna call decision tree classifier into this model, which we have, which is classifier actually. So as we told earlier, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna fit our model into this classifier. So we're gonna use X train and Y train. Oh, okay. So I didn't run the previous cell. So once you run it, you have a small model that's created for you. And uh, this is uh, basically the details of the model. You can look it up. These are different criteria that we would be using uh, inside the model function. So here it's just a simple one that we've called. So it will take out all the de uh, default values for this. Season. So what's the next step, guys? So we have the model ready. We have a test and train split. And what are we going to do now? We are going to predict. So what does this do? We're going to use model.predict, which is classifier.predict on our test data set. So we're going to put X test inside this predict function. And we're going to see how it goes. Okay. So it has, this predictions has all up test uh, classifier.predict results. Now we're going to test the accuracy of this model. So we could use the scikit-learn library. And we're gonna print it out.
So let's check. Yeah, so currently we have uh, 94.6 accuracy over here. So guys, just shoot up in the chat what accuracy y'all are getting. Yeah, which function were you talking about, Jada? Oh damn, we have a 97%, oh my God, that's nice. Yeah, it kind of changes from person to person and how, you know, this uh, test train function doesn't split the same data every time the same way. So it kind of randomizes and puts one bunch into tests and one bunch into train, you know, kind of randomly. So the results might vary from person to person. Ah, okay, cool. So, yeah, this is one, uh, another optional exercise that I would be giving you guys. You can try out this uh, k-nearest neighbors classifier, which is, again, a new, you know, uh, classifier, which is there. We could try and put that in this place of our decision tree algorithm. We will check out how it works. We'll just check the uh, accuracy between these two. Let's try it out again. So we're using KNN classification. So the model is done. Let's predict. Okay, the predictions are done. Oh, that's pretty. Ah, okay. Mine's coming the same. How about you guys just try out uh, nearest neighbors and check how the one comes. It is supposed to increase, but probably because, uh, you know, it, it, it usually comes around 97% for uh, KNN. Just try out, guys. Uh, let me know what values you're getting. Oh, 93. So is it better than the one before? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> there's a small increase. It's a little more accurate than our decision tree algorithm. So it's supposed to increase. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, nice, okay. Okay, your white test is not defined. Okay, so, Maybe the problem is with the test train split. Why don't you run that uh, cell again and try it out? That should work. Harshita, is it working right now? Oh, okay. That's weird. Uh, you just, uh, have you filled all the code blocks? You can just uh, go to runtime and press run all over here. Ah, okay, cool, it worked, awesome. So that's our first project, guys. Hope you guys had fun. So we would be moving on to regression right now. So this is another cool project. Um, it's Boston uh, house prediction one. Excuse me for a minute. I'm going to share with you guys the second one as well. You can do the same procedure, just copy to drive and we'll follow after that.
Oh, awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna assume everyone's copied. Let's try out. This is basically, like I had explained in the example, we're gonna have a bunch of uh, features that will determine the house uh, price of a uh, house in Boston. So we're gonna use the inbuilt data set, which is uh, Load Boston from Scikit-learn. And we're gonna work with the same thing that pretty much what we did earlier. So excuse me for this yeah so let's try out how it works shall we yeah so we're gonna load the data uh, data set and we're gonna import load boston and we're gonna set boston as load boston So guys, what's the next step? Now we have our data set. We need to find what are the features and what are the labels. So just like what we did earlier. Okay, I forgot to run the cell. So yeah, we run the cell as soon as we uh, finish coding that part so that we'll have a sequential order as well. So yeah. Oh, awesome. Okay, so here we are doing, we're gonna split this into it. Features and labels. So yeah, we have our data and we have our target. So this should split, I'm sorry, yeah. So now, next step is to split the data. So from sklearn that model selection, you import train test split, and we have x train x test y train and white us. And we're gonna use the train test function and we're gonna split our X and Y and we have a test size of point. Which codes actually, Tashita? Yeah, so we are basically creating a model. So we can use any kind of uh, random data and we can predict what would be the label. So over here, we have not done that part yet. So. Uh, here we have predicted X test here. Yeah? We can actually, you know, go ahead, uh, print predictions to see how it goes. We might have a bunch of, you know, Setosa, Versosa and all those. Let's check it out how it goes. So we have two zero, uh, two zero. So zero is assigned to, uh, you know, uh, Setosa one is assigned to Virginica and two is Versicolor. So that's how the data is actually stored in the data set. So if we put a bunch of, uh, you know, data into this, we could get the predictions with the help of classifier. And uh, this is pretty simple, actually. We can, you know, print X test to see how it actually, uh, how the data is uh, put in. So we have four characteristics, yeah? We have uh, our uh, sepal width, sepal length, you know, and petal width and petal length. 
if we put that in the proper order you can actually predict anything let's say we want x new let's say we have 2.5 3 5 3.2 these are random values i don't know what exactly it corresponds to and we want to predict pred is equal to classifier dot predict of x new so let's try this one Okay, we need to format it as array. So yeah. So it says one, which means that this corresponds to uh, Virginica. So we can put any set of values that we want into this classifier function, and it would uh, check out which one it's most appropriate for. So that's the thing. so we can go ahead with the one that we've done so far so we're going to use a linear regression model for this one and uh, what we would be doing is we will import the model linear regression is pretty easy to understand it's basically you know uh, just fitting that model into a line and uh, i mean approximately a line it might leave out a couple of a uh, data points here and there for you know for the actual linear purposes but it tries to fit it fit all the uh, uh features on the x axis and the output on the y axis and it kind of uh, draws a line and with that uh, slope and the intercept it is going to calculate what our rent is i mean house price is going to be for the upcoming uh, values that we will be presenting so we are calling the regressor and we have uh, created the model so we have split the data set we we first imported we then split the data set and now we also found the model so next step is we are going to fit it into the uh, regressor so we're going to do regressor dot fit x train y train and let's run this yeah so we have uh it has fit the intercept it has not normalized it has copied the x values these are just some couple of you know default values that's put into the linear regressor you needn't worry about this okay now so we have our predictions so we are going to use our test data set and try to predict what y test would be so let's run this yeah so this scoring is a little different from the accuracy score that we used in the previous uh machine learning model so what this actually does is it kind of takes an average uh difference between x test and y test back then it was simple like whether it classified or not here it's it's a little more complicated because we are dealing with continuous numbers here instead of a classification so it's going to have a statistical r square method you can google it up and it's going to find the error that way and it will uh, print the mean uh, accuracy score so let's go ahead we're going to score x test and y test so notice how i put x test and y test here so this regressor dot score what actually does it it actually predicts the output you don't have to actually uh, execute the above command at all 
So when you do this, it predicts from X test what our predictions would be and compares automatically with Y test and makes this code. So let's try it out. I'm getting 70.39. Now, what are you guys getting? Ah, okay, 69. Okay, 70. Anyone? 72, 74 is anyone? Ah, okay, 68. Oh, 75. Awesome. Lily always gets higher than others. I don't know. How. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So you've trained your data set very well. That's what it shows. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, let's let's try to predict from random values like how we did previously to make it more interesting. So wait, where do we have the predict? Yeah, cool. So let's check how X test is written. Okay, so let's just print one value of X test. So let's have a next new and we'll try to alterate this values a little bit. Let's say we have two here, 2.9, let this be zero, 1.5, 5.9. I'm just gonna make random values, guys. You can also try it out if you want. And this, I have 9.3. Make sure your values don't, uh, you know, change too much because, you know, it might actually make some sense that these values are so small or small, uh, so big. So let's not tinker with that. Just change like, you know, a little here and there. That should be fine. So eight, nine. I'm just going to change it to five and three. Let's see what goes. Let's predict with this. So we need print regressor dot predict x name. Oh, this is a little error. I think I'm. I think there's an E supposed to be here. Yeah. Oh. It's the error. Oh, it's supposed to have all of this. Let's just try to change a couple of values. Five, two, four. Let's check now. Print predict regressor predict of X name. Cool, no issues. Have a nice day. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know why it's not predicting, but yeah. So you guys can try this out later. So that's about it for this workshop. Hope you guys had a nice time today.
So these are a few resources that I found really helpful. You guys can probably take a screenshot and, you know, check out the various resources. These are nice courses that I found pretty useful. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, and before leaving, everyone, please fill out the checkout form for this workshop. I'll be sending it in the chat shortly. Oh, yeah, sure. Let me, yeah, I'll, I'll just copy paste the resources. Just a second. Sure, I'll drop my LinkedIn as well. Just a second, guys. These are the resources you can probably like copy it somewhere. And sure, I'll, I'll just uh, paste the link over here as well. That should also be fine. Okay. So that's my LinkedIn guys. And uh, 